दिस उपपत्ति इष्ट अनिष्ट उपपत्ति is to be understood little more prapti is upapatti in the wake of a situation which is ishta what is liked anishta what is not liked generally we say when we work for something with an expectation the expectation is fulfilled ishta when it is not fulfilled anishta this is with reference to deliberate actions on one's part and the results what about situations which are not deliberately created by you you need to face the life is not only facing the results of your activities life is facing situations which may be the results of your activity which may be just without you are doing anything you face situations you don't work for them you find yourself with a terrorist attack wherever it happens you have to you have to respond to that situation or something good happening you respond to that situation and that is why it is said ishta anishta upapatti upapatti means prapti in the wake of situations likeable and not likeable in all situations in general more or less you have a response which is the same more or less the same means you can be objective here a question can be asked don't we really swallow things like this attitude with this attitude whatever is we are accepting it as prasada whatever is the situation prasada means you are accepting therefore there is no progress and how your country will progress if people begin accepting what you say accept all situations that means there is no attempt to change we need to change situations not that accept situations as they come 
This is a general complaint against this samachittatva. But honestly, the outcome is the opposite. Because this, this attitude gives you objectivity. Objectivity calls for action. Lack of objectivity creates reaction. In reaction, there is no sense. There is mechanicalness. There is no awarefulness. Reaction happens, action is done. Clouds gather, rains happen. Your motor is set to revolve so many times per minute and so many times it will revolve per minute. It's mechanical, it's a happening. There is no self-awareness on the part of motor. I am revolving 200 times per minute. If it has that self-awareness, now and then it will be 190 or 180 and 100. Kabhi kabhi nahi hoga. It is mechanical. It is set to revolve. It revolves. If it is self-aware, it is no more mechanical. I am self-aware. In reaction, my self-awareness is lost to a great extent. I can act only when I am self-aware. When I accept the fact, I can, I can act. Acceptance of the fact does not mean absence of action. Acceptance of the fact is only up to a point. This is how the situation is. What I can do now to better the situation. For that, I must have all of myself. Anger, disappointment, regret and guilt, all these are not going to help me really. They sap my energy. They put me to bed. <laughs> if not bed, I am emotionally paralyzed. I can't act to the situation. The situation calls for action and I can't act and therefore I need to be aware of what is go going on. Accept in the sense this is how things are, what I can do. Therefore, I can reshuffle my ideas. I can plan differently. I can work for what I want. All of myself is available. Otherwise, I am down with my reactions. Once I accept failure, I will, I will, have, I will have a problem. It is not one-time failure in life. There are failures and failures. And therefore, I become a failure that paralyzes me. I will have starting trouble. I cannot really act. And therefore, in our culture, what is there this particular concept of prasada buddhi, accepting what is, 
makes me more objective and gives me the leisure, inner leisure to act upon the situation as the situation calls for, I can do, I can plan, I can even withdraw from a given activity when I find that it is not productive, I can start another. Life is full of avenues. If one avenue is not working for me, there are other avenues available. I go ahead and therefore it is one positive, positive approach. Therefore, there is nothing negative about it. Why? Because I am not a failure. I am only a karta. I am not the karma phala data. Since I am responsible for my planning, for my doing, I don't become a failure. I become a failure only when I am the doer and I am the producer of the result of action also. But I am not. There is some other factor, a factor over which I have no control. The factor is karma pala datritvam. And somebody else is the producer of the result of action. Of course, it is all laws. It is not that somebody decides what I should have. It is all laws. The laws that may include the law of karma too. And therefore, when there is another factor over which I have no control, I cannot call myself a failure. I have limited knowledge. I have limited powers. Even if I know, I cannot stop. And if I know I can stop and I don't know what is up in the future, I do not know. The hidden variables are too many. And therefore, I am not all knowing, I am not almighty. When that is the case, I cannot get all that I want. I do not call all the shots. This is a fact. Where is the question of being a failure? <laughs> I cannot be a failure. I can only be a performer. I keep performing. I am a player in the game of living. I perform. I enjoy performing. Because I am ready to accept what is going to happen. Therefore, I am not paralyzed emotionally. If I consider myself a failure, then I have not one failure in my life. <laughs> I have a series of failures. Therefore, I am a failure. Therefore, once I am a failure, I will have a starting trouble. Arabha becomes a problem. I can't begin. I will apprehend failure. And therefore, I am available totally when I am ready to receive the result of action as Prasada. I am not paralyzed emotionally. Therefore, 
I can face situations created by my own actions, deliberate actions and I mean what we say the results of action, I am ready to face them and even situations I am not, I am not totally responsible of in my knowledge. I can't say I am totally responsible of these situations, but maybe I am responsible. My past actions may be responsible because I face situations which I didn't work for and also there are other players, they can abuse their will and create situations which I may have to face and therefore it's one of facing situations. That is why that Ishtanishtopapati is a very beautiful compound. Whether it is deliberately created situation by my own planning and doing and which is very favorable or the result is not favorable and in between my activities I face situations which may be due to my own past karma or due to others activities I may have to face situations and therefore the truth is I have to face situations. And I have a good shock absorbing attitude. The attitude of Prasada Buddhi, it helps me absorb and therefore makes me objective. The more I am objective, I told you, the more I am with Ishwara. Therefore, it is important to practice the Prasada Buddhi so that I can become more alive in all situations, more alive to what is Ishwara. What is, is Ishwara and therefore I can be alive to Ishwara. Therefore, Avya Bicharini Bhaktihi. My relating to Ishwara is called Bhakti. And it is very, it is, it is very beautiful if it is, if it is unflinching. If it is unflinching, it is always present, my attitude, my relating to Ishwara, basically I am one who recognizes Ishwara's presence. That makes me fundamentally a devotee, first and last. And that is not going to be substituted. That attitude is not going to be replaced by any situation, varying situation. And so, mai avya bicharini bhaktihi is, a, is an important important thing that is mentioned in this list, is a list it is, starting from Amanitvam, absence of, 
demanding respect from others. Manaha means Atmani Pujyatva Bhavana. Aham Pujyaha. I deserve respect from others. And the one who has got Mana is called Mani. Tasya Bhavaha Manitva means the disposition of a person who is Mani who demands respect from others. Amanitva means absence of demanding respect from others. What a blessing it is. If you demand, if you don't demand respect from others, you will be much more at peace with yourself. Think of it. How can he say so? When I went there, he didn't, he didn't even greet me. Because he got promotion. In fact, he didn't see you at all. His mind was elsewhere. We misread all that. Even if that person doesn't respect you, then so what? Why should he respect you? Why don't you respect others? Why should anybody respect you for what? <laughs> what do you have? <laughs> oh, I am such a moneyed man. So what? That makes you more jealous of you. <laughs> Why should he respect you? I have so many industries, so what? <laughs> Unless you give him an industry. Oh, I have got so much knowledge. That only makes him jealous. <laughs> or he doesn't care for knowledge. He has got his own value system. Respect can come from anybody, and anybody can get respect. A good pickpocketeer, highly respected by other pickpocketeers because he is very good. <laughs> when he comes, all of them get up <laughs> and do namaskar <laughs> because he is a guru of all these fellows. This respect is silly. Better you give respect to others, respect will come. When a rose blooms, it doesn't call for attention. And those who have got inner leisure will see the flower, will stop and see. But the rose doesn't feel that I am not seen by anybody. <laughs> you know, it's like this. You command respect. You don't demand. We'll think about this more. Thank you.